Before we begin, let me start by saying, this mini meth is written for and dedicated to Jennifer P, a top tier patron and a damn great nurse. The star of our movie today is Janet Lee plus Tony Curtis. Please. Our story begins in Haddonfield, Illinois. See how it says it right there? On Halloween night, 1963. See how it says it right there? I don't know why horror movies always start with two ugly teens getting it on, but I think the idea of the homely children they could create is the scariest thing of all. Look at him taking the little child's mask. Whoa, whoa, damn, that was fast, brother. Work on your endurance. Oh, there's the mask. And whoever this is is so damn salty about the boyfriend wearing that mask, he goes upstairs and goes all psycho on his sister. Whoop, wasn't supposed to tell you that. But you're about to find that out anyway when the child walks out of the house with a bloody butcher knife and stares off into oblivion while his parents just gonna, what? Stand there for two goddamn minutes not trying to figure out what the f they're looking at? Michael, what did you do? Over here in Smith's Grove, Illinois, see how it says right there, after we done fast forwarded 14 years and 355 days, 359 if you count leap years, see how it says right there, with Dr. Loomis and his assistant going to pick up Michael, who's been locked away for Psycho and his sister. He put his hand on the head, she put the foot on the gas, they almost got whiplash, they took off so fast. Speaking of taking off fast, there go Michael, pedal to the metal, burning rubber in that mom mobile. Lord, don't trust that little child, I've seen what they can do. One minute you bump an ugly with your fellow ugly, and next thing you know you laid out on the floor with ketchup on your tatas. Here's Michael, and here's Michael, and where's Michael? We ain't even here to end the crank, this man's a pro. And what's going on in Michael's head when he creeps on these boys? Ah, feeling nostalgic thinking about the good old days when I was just a little child, psycho and my sister. Annie, Linda, and Laurie take a walk. And there's Michael. And there's Michael. And where's Michael? And then it gets dark. And Michael follows Laurie and Annie to some houses where they babysitting somebody's brats. And it gets naked. And then she almost dies. But then she don't. Then Annie takes the child she should be tending to to Laurie, who ain't got no mans because she's too smart so Annie can go boning. But when Annie tries to take off to get off, she gets off. Do you see how that works? Later, Linda arrives at Annie's employer's house and bones with her boyfriend, Bob. But after Bob gets off, he gets off. See how that works? Meanwhile, Linda calls Laurie and is like, I was starring in my own movie. It's called Boning with Bob. But now I'm getting off. Toodles! No, actually, she didn't say nothing. Just picked up the phone, dropped it on the floor. <sighs> was all she heard. And Laurie's like, Annie, are you okay? So she goes to find that Annie is not okay. And Bob hanging out and Linda limp. But Laura can't outrun that slow ass, so she stabs him. But he ain't deceased, and she hides in the closet, and stabs him in the eye, and right through the titty. But he ain't deceased, and Dr. Loomis pew pews that ass. Whee! But he ain't deceased. And the moral of this story is, what's the moral of this story? If you want to survive on Halloween, be small enough that men don't ask you out. Because if Laura had been doing it, she'd been deceased. The dead end. Thank you again to my loyal patron, Jennifer. If you would like a mini map of your own, head over to my Patreon page to find out how. For Movies Explained For, I'm Jeb. Ah, ah, dire.